All right, this is second grade, module three, lesson seven. And in this lesson, we're going to start combining all the different kinds of forms of a number. We're going to be talking about standard form, expanded form, unit form, word form. And it might be start to get a little overwhelming for your students trying to keep all of these in place in their mind. So a uh, big thing I would recommend is creating uh, up on the wall, a, a nice chart that stays up there for several days at a time, you know, several days, just showing examples of each form. It's essential that we students know all of these forms because each one of them is a, a nice learning tool for other things that we're going to be learning later on in the year. So uh, to help keep all these forms in, in place, make a chart and keep it up on the wall. Right here, the, the thing I, I'm going to point out is they give you the order, standard form, then expanded form, then word form. You don't have to have your students fill them out in this order. In fact, it might even be helpful to do the expanded form first. For example, we have, let's see, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700. So we have seven bundles of hundreds. So we have seven hundreds plus then let's look at our tens we have one two three four tens so that would be 40 and then we have just a single unit just one unit so that's just one and there's our expanded form and that might help us go backwards and do the standard form now that we have our expanded form here that might make it easier for students to say, oh, that's 741. And then the word form is basically you take the expanded form and you write it into words. So 741. So each, each one of these has its words. 700 right here, 40, 40. One, one, there you go. Uh, the one thing we did not have is unit form. What unit form would look like would be seven hundreds. That's the seven bundles. Four tens. There's your 40. And one unit or one one. And there you go. So now we have all four forms. Standard, expanded, word, and unit. Now here we're just going to take that understanding of all the different forms and we're going to order, arrange these numbers in order from least to greatest, or I'm sorry, greatest to least. And it might help, I don't know, it might help to consider the place value chart. So you have your ones, you have your tens, and then you have your hundreds. And it might help to take these numbers and uh, write them in the place value chart. So 212 is going to look like this. Two hundreds, one ten, two ones. And then let's do 221. So it's going to be two hundreds, two tens, and one one. And then let's do it in green. 122 is going to be one hundred, two tens, and two ones. And what I would do is at this point I would just think logically or imagine what the bundles of popsicle sticks would look like. And since this green number only has one bundle of the hundreds, we know it is officially the least. So it's going to look way back there. It's going to go way in the back. All right. So now we're kind of done with this guy. And then we can look at the two remaining numbers. They both have two bundles of the hundreds. But the blue number has two bundles of 10 compared to only one bundle of 10. That means this blue number is the officially the greatest. So it goes way over here, 221. And so 212 is our middle number. So there it is from greatest to least. Now one of the things in the lesson itself is talking about what to do if you have more than 10 in a column. 
it's not one of the questions in the homework, but it's part of your lesson um, because I believe you're setting the scene for future lessons. So let's talk about that. So if you have 12 ones, what does that look like? Well, let's imagine our place value chart. And again, parents and teachers, I make my students write this out. I don't give it to them. And the only way they're going to memorize it is if you make them tr keep trying to remember it. And if we provide it for them, then they're not going to remember anything or memorize anything. So I make them write out that place value chart, even though sometimes for our second graders it takes forever for them to write it out. But it's worth it in the long run. And so now uh, we're going to model this. And so since it says, let's do this one, 12 ones. And I'll model this in red. So 12 ones means we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 ones. And we, we remember that any time you have 10 in a column, that means you can group those 10 together and you can bundle them up like with the rubber bands and the popsicle sticks, right? And that can turn into a single bundle over here. So 12 ones becomes 110 and two ones. We want students to be able to see that this stands for 110 and this stands for two ones, the idea of that. Similarly, and let's do this in, oh, let's do this in green. When we have 12 tens, so that means we're going to have 12 bundles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And parents and teachers, notice I'm arranging our dots in the 10 frame figure configuration. And that's very intentional to make it easier to um, count and see the bundles that are needed. So we know that whenever you have 10 you can bundle them together and put that bundle in the next column over. So we end up getting 102 tens. So I want you to notice we have a 12 here, 1, 2, and we have a 12 here, a 1 and a 2. Uh, in both cases, we had 12 ones, 12 tens, but this time, we have this one, because it's in the hundreds column, means we have 100, two tens, and no ones left over. So that's equal to 120, all right? So 12 ones, that's equal to 12. 12 tens is equal to 120. Parents and teachers, it's okay if our students don't entirely understand this at this point. We're just laying the, the ground the groundwork, the foundation for future lessons. And that wraps up Grade 2, Module 3, Lesson 7, where we're connecting all these different forms, uh, the standard form, the expanded form, etc.